In this video, we're gonna be learning about breadboards. This here is your basic breadboard. It is quite simply constructed, but it's very clever actually, and it is very useful for prototyping when you're working on electronics projects. You can get different types. This one here is quite a cheap one, and I wouldn't recommend getting one like this, and you'll find out why in just a second. I will explain how this works first, and you'll see why this one maybe isn't a good idea. It allows you to prototype using DuPont wires. So these wires will plug in to these rails. These rails are connected in unique ways, which I'll show you. And you just plug them in and these can then plug into your other devices. Or you can cross them across multiple rails and do some very cool, clever stuff. So first things first, how are these actually connected? If you look at this section over there and over there, these five are connected to each other and the same going across all of these rails. They aren't connected there, that's a separation. These five are connected to each other, but those aren't connected to those. Then you've got these ones up here, which are very useful. And these are common across the entire line. So from there to there, it's all connected. And I'll demonstrate that in just a second. These are useful for doing common ground or common five volts or common three volts to provide power to the various devices that you're gonna be using. So let's have a quick look at how these are actually connected. First things first, let's go and plug this cable into that row. And what we're gonna be doing is taking our multimeter, I'm going to connect that over there. And the multimeter is set on that setting over there. And we're gonna press this blue button, which you'll see that little audio symbol. And just to show you, the probes are connected onto those two holes. What this allows you to do is, when you're touching the two probes together, it should give an audible alert to say that they are connecting. So as you can see there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this other cable and we're going to just connect it onto there. And just to show that they are actually connected here, if I touch on that probe, we can see that's connected. If I go into that row over there, nothing happens because those are not connected to each other. If I go down to this row, again, not connected. However, if I go into any one of those holes over there, we can see that they are actually connected. I'll show you just one more. If we go down to there again, if I go to the side, nothing. If I go right next to it again, nothing. If I go in line with it, then they are connected. So let's try the same with these rails at the top. So if I plug that in up there, and if I plug that there, we can see that they are connected. If I plug it down there, nothing, because they are not connected. And the same over there, you can see that it is connected all the way to the end over here. And the same goes for these bottom rails as well. If I go to the end there, nothing. But if I go there, we can see they are connected. Let's try the same thing with the cheaper version over here. Basically, it's the same as this device, but without these common rails at the top and the bottom, which it has limited functionality for me because I need quite a lot of ground. I need quite a lot of five volts and three volts. So this here wouldn't necessarily do the job. I guess you could make it work, but it's just much easier spending a few more pennies or cents and getting a better one. But let's just have a look and see how this works. So if we go over there and again, connect that up there. Let's move that out the way. And let's connect this to the probe. And we can see there's nothing there. Nothing there. But connected over there. And that's the same across the board. You'll see here this doesn't connect to each other. It's not a common rail. So basically you have multiple rows of five 
that allow you to be connected only between those five. What you could do, like I said, you can reconfigure this so it's more useful. So for example, if I do this and I bridge it across there, that means I've opened up a few more of these uh, connectors and we can see that that's connected. And you can keep on bridging as you want as well to give you a bit more of a common rail for your five volts or ground. But as I said, it's much easier to just go and get yourself one of these. So that's the basics of breadboards. You're going to use these quite a lot. So get used to it and uh, make sure you understand how these are all connected so you don't make mistakes and burn out any of your components. And we'll see you on the next episode. Until then, stay spicy. I hope that you're enjoying this series and that you're getting some value out of it. And if you are, please consider supporting me on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash chili chump. And if you sign up there to support me, then you get access to my private Discord server where there are multiple channels that you can come have discussions around anything I talk about in my videos, things like growing and source making, and of course, electronics projects and automation. So it's a good place to come and ask questions if you have any questions around automation that you're doing for yourself or anything that I've talked about in my videos. And I really hope to see you there.